I broke my tractor. But don't worry, I think we can fix it. So what did I break you're dying to know? Well, it's not a big deal per se. However, it could turn into be a pretty big deal because, well, what did the old timers used to say? A stitch in time saves nine. It's a greasert here on the front tie rod. Now greaserts, if you don't know, most of you probably do know this, are a way for you to introduce grease, grease daily maintenance for tractors. Um, a lot of things are not sealed on tractors because it's just the environment that they work in is just too rugged, especially on hinge pins and buckets and backhoes and things. So they re rely upon daily greasing if you're using them a lot. So what happened here, who knows what happened, but something could have been a rock, could have been a stick, has flipped up and knocked the top off and broken this off clean with the threads remaining inside. Now, if we leave this untreated, being it's just an open portal there, dust, debris, water, goo is gonna get in there and further it introduce you know, this grit and, and abrasive things to the inside of this ball joint, which needs to turn. And it turns a lot because it every time you move the steering wheel and the suspension moves up and down, it needs to be greased regularly. So I'm gonna show you how to get something like this out easily without ruining the threads and sim a, it's a simple repair. This is something that would can happen to any type of a piece of equipment you have. The fix is gonna be the same on all of them. So the first thing we're gonna need is a new grease zert fitting. Now I'd recommend if you, when next time you go to the parts store, get yourself an assortment of these little guys. They're gonna come in two sizes. Here's your big ones. You can see the threads on the big one there versus the small one. This is pretty unusual for smaller equipment. Usually it's gonna be this size. What size is that? I don't really know, I don't remember. Um, but it's uh, pretty standard across the board. Here's one we're gonna use, just a little guy right there. We have plenty of room, no problem with access. If you see these with 90s on them or 45s even, I saw one of those in there. Here's one with a 45. Those are gonna be used for tight to, kind of tight to get areas, but that's not really a problem here. So with that grease fitting broken off flush, how are we possibly gonna get that out? Because we can't get a pair of pliers or vice grips on it. Well, that's pretty simple. The tool guys have got us covered. This is called an extractor kit right here. Now, there's no need to go out and buy a snap-on because these, in my experience, these Hansen brand are the ones that are the ones that snap on brands as their own. And these seem to be a lot less money. How I know that is I, I bought a pair of snap on one time and it had the exact same case. To me, it looked a little suspicious. But what you get in these extractors is a drill bit. And I've actually got this one chucked up. A drill bit that corresponds with, well, my granddad used to call these things easy outs. But what it is, is it is a, is a tool that's got really sharp teeth on it that you turn in a counterclockwise location or, or rotation, excuse me, uh, which backs the thread out and they work really, really well. Now they'll have right here next to them, this is the corresponding drill bit to be used with this. You want to make sure when you're sizing these things, you take your new fitting and you don't want to use a drill bit that's bigger that's bigger than the threads because once you drill through there, you're gonna drill out all the threads and there'll be nothing to screw to anymore. So take the bolt to the fitting that you want to use and find the drill bit that is that's, you know, comparable, the right size is gonna work with that. Now, the, some of the better ones, the older ones, and I'm sad to say that I haven't been able to find these anymore, have a left-handed drill bit. Means when you're reversing your drill, that's when it's cutting. And those are my favorite. My granddad always used those on getting bolts out. And the reason why the left-handed drill bit is so handy is that as you're drilling, 50% of the time, in my experience, the drill bit alone will back the thread out or the bolt out, whatever it is that's broken off inside the metal. These, on the other hand, are right hand, traditional twist. What I don't like about them so much is that as you're drilling in, it's increasing the tension, it's continuing to tighten it. However, it's also been my experience that if you watch really close as you're drilling, sometimes you'll see it shifting and moving. And that's kind of a good thing because the vibration of the drill bit actually has broken it free and it doesn't seem to be a big problem. It works pretty good. So the tools we're gonna to need for this little procedure, of course, are gonna be a drill, a brass hammer, which I'll explain that later. You don't have to use brass if you don't have one. Not everybody has one of those. A wooden mallet, something that's softer than your tool steel. And of course, they're a bit. So let's see how this goes. Now, I'm gonna watch very closely. Let's clean that off a little bit there. Of course, we're gonna need a little shop towel. We don't want to get any more shavings or anything in there than we absolutely have to. 
There may not be a way, or dirt, there may not be a way to avoid it. However, it's just kind of best we can do. Okay, so now we'll push that right in the center and we'll start drilling. Okay. Now that is very bad, what just happened. And I think what happened was the drill bit caught the threads and it ran the, it ran the, uh, the greaser, the remnants of it all the way through the threads and it, and it threaded out and fell inside the ball joint. Okay, so now you can see if what I can do, if I can get that to, to fit into the end of that, I can grab that and thread, get the thread started and back it back out. Reason for the brass hammer, this is hard tool steel. We don't want to whack on a hard tool steel with the a hardened faced hammer. It can, it can break it and it can chip and it'll probably go right in your eyeball. Things have a funny way of happening like that. All right, let's see if we can't gently coax that up there and thread that back out. I can feel it in there. So I've got the easy out in the hole and I just have to make sure I don't cross thread it. This is not at all what I was expecting to happen, but this is the way life goes sometimes. Okay, it's coming out, but it's slipping a little bit, but I'm just gonna take my time. It's a very delicate process because these are very tiny little threads. And if we look here, we'll see, voila, there's our little piece. Here you can see the two pieces of the broken grease certs there. Uh, I have two because both, both sides were broken off. So here's a new one. So let's thread that in and then we'll be back in business. I can't emphasize the importance of staying up on top of these little things. You know, they seem like minor things, but they all kind of contribute to problems down the road. Most of you know that I ran equipment, heavy equipment most of my life. Um, had my own equipment, my own businesses, and worked for lots of other guys. And one thing that pretty much everyone understood, one, one guy that had a lot of equipment that I worked for out of high school, he told me that if he bought a brand new excavator, for example, a, you know, machine, and, and he put, give it to, gave it to one guy, and that was his machine to run. And he ran it every day and um, fueled it and greased it and was really from, got familiar with it. He said a machine like that, he could get, you know, 6,000, 6,500 hours out of it before it was, you know, really worn and time to, to move on, you know, to, to, to be replaced with a new one. But he said, you take that same machine and you cycle multiple guys through it. So you have different guys on it all the time. He was at 3,000, 3,500. That machine is, is hammered. You can see. I'm going to pump the grease. is a little bit dirty. There may have gotten some muddy water in there. And I'll just keep pumping that out until it comes out clean. Get, help to get some of that dirt out of there. And the reason for that uh, is that a guy that runs a machine, when you run it every day, you get to know it. You know how it sounds, you know how it smells, you know what particular vibrations you know, happen, what's good or bad. And, uh, and when something's different, you, you know you're aware of it right away and you can take preventative measures. You, know, you can uh, uh, do repairs on it. Where you get a guy that uh, ran, runs it diff all, you know, different guys all the time, you know, they're not used to it. They don't know its personality. They don't know if something is going wrong and oftentimes it's overlooked. So machines like that just, they don't, just don't last as long. So I thought we thought that was kind of interesting. So that's all there is to fixing a broken greaser. It's pretty simple. All you need is that basic easy out kit. I'll put a link uh, in the subject heading as well as in the comments there uh, where you can get these. I think they're on Amazon, but this is a really important thing to have in your toolkit. It can just save you a tremendous amount of trouble down the road because getting broken bolts out is hard. I've got a lot more advanced techniques on that for if this isn't good enough, uh, maybe we can go into that in another time if I run into that situation. But there's lots of tricks up your, a guy should have up his sleeve to be able to deal with that because that can be a huge, huge problem. 
So greasing equipment, don't forget, for most general purpose, uh, unless you're working in some extreme environment, grease your equipment about every time you fill it up for fuel. So um, this, this tractor here, whenever I come up and fuel it for fuel, which is not very often, um, is uh, I'll, I'll just grease the whole thing. Uh, it just takes a couple minutes and it's not a big deal. Now, if you're working, uh, let's say you're working underwater, meaning if you're digging in a water or a pond, you know, you're gonna wanna grease way more often, you know, maybe three and four times a day, or if it's really, really dust, you know, you just have to tell. If you start hearing squeaking, if you hear your pin, pins when they're rotating squeaking in the front end bucket or the front axle or the, or the rear backhoe or whatever, it, it's, it's gone too long. You know, it's like they say, if you're thirsty, you're already dehydrated. So grease before that happens, because what's happening when you get that squeaking is that basically just metal to metal and it's gonna wear those pins out and your machine's gonna get sloppier and sloppier and sloppier. I have seen machines, guys operating machines that were dry in the right condition with the sunlight on there, where I could see on big excavators, metallic shavings, you know, just blowing away, just makes, makes me cringe. That's my nail on the chalkboard, there's an ungreased machine. That's it, all right, so thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next video.